Hi, my name is Brandon and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. Today I want to talk about taking things personally. It's something that I've struggled a lot with both in my active addiction and in recovery. And I think that in recovery, we have to do some work to try to not take things so personally. Because what I found is a lot of times when I am taking something personally, it's because of an inflated sense of pride, ego, or fear that's indicative of something that I need to work on in myself rather than a problem with someone else. Had a few examples recently that have reminded me of this. The first is I found out that a cousin of mine, I invited her for Christmas to come see us. And instead, she's going to see her in-laws uh, because there's a new niece in the family. And I, when she told me that, I took it personally at first. I was hurt that she chose them over me. And... Pretty quickly, I realized that that was uh, an exaggerated reaction to the situation. Um, there were all sorts of good reasons why it made sense that she would be spending time with them. Um, and I also had a part in that, in that I, I have not made a lot of efforts, especially in my active addiction. I didn't make many efforts to be close with her. I rarely reached out to her to see how she was doing, to form any kind of relationship with her. And so, you know, there's all these different factors playing into her decision to do this that have nothing to do with me that have uh, or that have something to do with things that I might have done differently in the past. So instead of being hurt by this, you know, I, I turned it around and said, well, maybe this is a, the, number one, it makes sense for her to do this, but also number two, maybe this is a good opportunity for me to re-examine how I conduct my relationship with this person. And maybe I ought to reach out to them more and try to build more of a relationship with them. So that was the first one. The second one is I've got a close friend, someone that I grew up with, who really has not returned the, I, I, I have always felt like this person was one of my best friends of my life. And I, but over the last few years, this person has not really engaged with me that much. And I haven't really felt like they have wanted to be involved in my life all that much. And it hurts. Um, and it's really hurtful. And I keep trying to reach out to this person to to no avail. And, you know, I, I have had to... I, I This is a case where I actually talked to this person at one point as part of my recovery program. And I said, I, I need to know... Is there anything I've done in the past that, yeah, and I laid it out on the table. I said, I, f I feel like uh, I keep reaching out and you aren't reciprocating. And I'm concerned that maybe I did something that has hurt you or that has caused a rift between us. And if I have, can we talk about that? And uh, see and and give me an opportunity to make some amends about it and this person responded no you haven't done anything I'm just a bad friend and so even with that response uh, there's a part of my mind that keeps going back to well maybe he's not being honest with you maybe there is something and he's just not telling you and I continue to take it personally when this person doesn't communicate with me when I have every bit of evidence showing me, including his his own admission, that there there's nothing involved with me in this issue. It, it's really a him issue. And so my inflated sense of ego, my inflated sense of pride is getting in the way here. And I'm turning it into a me problem when it's not, you know. And I think that's what happens a lot of times is that even when we're blaming ourselves, that's an ego thing. 
we're making a problem about ourselves when it isn't. And we have to learn when to take the right steps like I did and address, hey, I see that our relationship has changed some. Is there anything that I need to know or anything we need to discuss? And if the other person says no, then we we need to move on. And that's what I needed to do in this situation is, you know, continue loving this person the same way I do. I don't have to take it personally and get upset with them. I don't have to be angry with them or dismiss them from my life. I can still love them the way that I do, but I just got to move on. If they're not going to reciprocate in the relationship, then I just got to say, okay, well, I'm not going to invest much more time in this until they show me that they're interested in the same kind of um, friendship that I am. So that's another thing that came up. And finally, the big one for me is always criticism at work. You know, anytime I get criticism at work, I it it hurts. And it, it like I, I get anxiety around it and all of those things. And this comes, this I'm sure many, many people with uh, who are recovering from substance use disorder can appreciate because a lot of us are perfectionists. We want to do everything right. We don't want to do anything wrong. And we hate being told we're doing something wrong. Um, and that causes some problems for us. So what I have to learn, and I read this in an article as I was uh, as I was looking things up around this this morning, is I, I need to incorporate that criticism into my idea of perfection. I need to incorporate that criticism into, hey, anything I hear about potential improvements I can make for myself is actually going to help me achieve the level of performance that I like to achieve. So if I like to be, you know, top achiever in anything I do, then criticism is going to help me do that. And now I can't take it personally. Um, so I got to get my ego and my pride out of the way. I, I've also got to overcome any fear that I have to ask questions that's going to help me truly understand the criticism. That's been a problem for me in the past is I get criticism and I interpret it my own way instead of seeking clarification on what people are actually saying. So I've got to overcome all of that so that I can really get the most out of it. But once I do that, taking constructive criticism from somebody and even non-constructive criticism, if I can take that and incorporate it into what I need in terms of changing performance, changing anything I'm doing about my job, that can help me do a better job in the future, which ultimately is is my goal. I, I want to improve at anything that I'm doing. So these are three examples that have come up recently for me that reminded me that Basically, any time I take things personally, um, I, I need to take a step back and look and see, is this really something that I need to take personally? Um, or is my ego, my pride, my fear getting involved in a way in this relationship that is preventing me from really engaging with this person the way I should. And usually it's the ego, pride, and fear that are that are getting in there and causing problems for me and not something that someone else said. That's really what I've learned as I've watched myself over the past year or so. Uh, still a lot of practice. I can't, I can't, I, I still take things personally. Um, but at least I can recognize it now and recognize that when it happens, I need to take a step back, look at it a little bit more closely rather than using it as an excuse to then wallow in self-pity, um, self-loathing and get involved in all those feelings that really acted as fuel for my addiction um, rather than fuel for self-improvement.
That's it for today. I'll be back here tomorrow with more. Have a good one.